Texas Triple Tapper back again here. I uh, wanted to show you guys, um, I've had quite a few questions uh, since I've posted uh, the videos on the, uh, this is the full size SIG 1911 and then this is the, uh, the SIG 1911 Nightmare. So, you know, you can see that, well, here, let's do it this way. You can see that it is, you know, quite a bit, quite a bit smaller um, overall, you know. Um, and then having just posted uh, a video on this one here, this is the Glock 30 45 ACP. So I'm just going to close all the chambers. They've all been safety checked. No round in here, no magazines loaded. Good to go. And last but not least, double check that guy. And good to go. Okay, so now we can kind of get a little bit of, a little bit better comparison. So, you know, you see this one on here, and then now let's make a 45 ACP sandwich. You know, you see how much shorter this one is, even both this way and this way. You know, it's considerably shorter this way. So you're talking a good, you know, inch, inch and a half or so. Um, this one is 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 really really nice. I, I really like it. I, I would definitely carry this one for sure. Um, you know what's nice about the Sig is that each one of these Sigs came with two of these, uh, and they each hold eight rounds. And this magazine will work in either one of these weapons, but you still got eight rounds plus one. So again going back to this bad boy you know you see it holds 10 plus one so you know this is definitely a very nice you know compact little pistol um so you know you can kind of see the the difference overall you know it's a little bit wider it looks a little bit wider than the sig either that i mean the sig has more rounded edges the glocks are a little bit more square you know you see there the night sights show up nice actually they both have night sights but i didn't catch it yeah see they, they both have night sights um and i've never been really crazy about the sights on the clock but you know it is it is a great weapon uh you know so that just kind of gives you here let me kind of arrange them a little better kind of in size if you will you know you got the, the small medium and then the large um the only you know thing that i that that really stands out as a difference to me other than you know uh, this coming these like i said come with with two of these single stack magazines the glock does come with three uh double stack and you can put 10 in them which is which is a big advantage um the Glock will break down. You can you can disassemble that Glock very quickly. Whereas opposed to these 1911 style pistols, they're a little bit. Uh, no, I'm not going to say difficult, but they're they're a little bit trickier. And then too, if you if you're really not careful, if you're new to the 911, putting this slide stop back in, you get what what people commonly refer to as the idiot scratch, which is because you have to line up this. And then there's another hole here and a hole here and the barrel has a, a, a loop in it. And so it all, it's, you know, if you're familiar with 1911s at all, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, if you're not, take a look at some of my other videos where I've broken them down and kind of showed under the hood. I'm not going to do that in this video, but this Glock is, is really simple to break down. I mean, you know, you, ha you do have to pull the trigger, which I mentioned in other videos. I, I don't like that just from a safety standpoint. Um, you know, you just kind of pull it down and then, you know, well, if I can do it on camera, there we go. So it's already coming off you can already break the clock down and it goes together just as easily. There's no, there's no tabs to put back in. There's no, you know, uh, anything to line up correctly. It just kind of does it. You put the barrel back in the slide, the spring, and then slide it back on and you're, you're good to go. You could literally... Let's say if you had a spare barrel and for whatever reason, I don't know, the other barrel started melting or something because you were firing it so hot, you could literally take it out with some 
tongs or you know gloves or whatever the hell you want and just switch them out um, uh, that suffices to say that like I said the bear you can you can break these down and change them uh, very very quickly also changing out like this back strap here on the Glock is really simple too it's just held in by this little pin right here and if you want to change out the grips and things on the SIG you know you've got more things involved there's some some stuff going on up here in the housing so you have to kind of change these out but <clears throat> I will say <clears throat> excuse me what I like about this this nightmare sig is if you look at see look at the difference see how this one here has a rounded kind of edge and this one is square um, not that that has ever bothered my my hand but when you're you know when you grasp it it you don't feel anything at all it has a really really nice feel in the hand and and this one this one does too I don't I don't even notice it but you know like I said I noticed this was a change that they made it has that nice curve to it so um, anyways uh, <clears throat> excuse me other than that you know it's just kind of more of a of a of a preference you know what what you wanna what you wanna shoot with what you wanna carry um, practice with whatever you know whatever application you're you're using them for I happen to be you know a really big fan of Sig as well as Glock. Um, their reliability and quality are both impeccable um, and again I just really wanted to show kind of a difference and of course you know there's there's a lot of other 45 ACPs out there uh, in, both in the 1911 style and and not there's a lot of other manufacturers but these just happen to be uh, two of my favorites so I wanted to do just a quick comparison video because I've had a lot of questions and people asking me oh well you know which one's bigger, how much bigger, you know, that, that kind of a thing. Which one, which one would you carry? Um, I mean, for concealed carry, I certainly wouldn't recommend this one. But again, you know, <clears throat> on that, there's no, there are no hard and fast rules. It's all about what you're comfortable with. I mean, you know, I, has, I have a, a Desert Eagle uh, 50 AE that, you know, I just simply wouldn't carry. But I could if I wanted to, if I could, you know, find a holster big enough and a belt strong enough to hold that damn thing up but you know it all comes down to personal preference and so that's really what you got to ask yourself is hey you know how, how comfortable d does this feel to to carry around in your waistband or however in your in your purse for for you ladies however you want to do it um, and also too how comfortable are you shooting it you know so you could have like I said all these guns and you say, oh, this one fits the best in my purse. But if you don't ever shoot it, you don't ever practice with it, it's probably not going to be the best overall for you to use, you know, should should someone try to, you know, harm you or, or rob you or, you know, break in your house, what, whatever the case may be. Um, so I would certainly recommend that whatever pistol you're going to choose, that you become familiar with it, know how it works, not just how to aim and pull the trigger. Get familiar with breaking them down, taking them apart, cleaning them all that kind of good stuff. It helps to kind of take uh, some of the mysteriousness, if you will, um, out of um, guns, you know? I mean, they, they're they as safe or dangerous as people make them. So um, with that being said, I'll uh, go ahead and close. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email, uh, leave some comments down below. Um, I, hope, I hope this comparison was helpful. Um, until next time, Triple Tapper. Out.